Okay, can you hear me? Uh, well, hello, my name is Angeles Matias, and we're going to talk a bit about Lazaro. I don't know if you recall, a couple of years ago we didn't talk about the previous steps that brought Lazaro to life. Um, so, this is our final project for the university. Uh, we both study at uh, the University of Quilmes and we both work at Tempines. Um, so if everything goes well, we will be graduating in this month. I don't know, you can ask one of our juries there. Um, no pressure. Um, but well, let's start. First of all, what's a screen reader? Um, screen readers are used by blind people or visually impaired people. Uh, to understand what's in the screen the same way we do. Um, they can be combined with things like um, screen magnifiers or braille keyboards. Uh, nowadays, most of OSCs have one that is installed already, and there are lots of uh, options that people can choose from. So, um, what they do is they detect what's on the screen we usually see, like this could be a web page, and they try to we arrange that and create a visual model uh, and order the information the same way that we would usually read it with our eyes. Um, so they do that in order to send it uh, in, in steps to what we, what is called a text-to-speech synthesizer. From now on we will call it TTS. It's not because I can't pronounce that word. Don't think, don't think it's because of that. Uh, so wait. The text-to-speech synthesizers uh, basically do that. They grab the text that was transformed and they say out loud. Uh, the voice can be uh, customized in lots of ways, they can test the speed, lots of things. So, um, I guess this was, wasn't intentional. So, uh, the motivation behind this, we teach with, with Smalltalk, we teach in one of the basic OP subjects of uh, uh, University of Kilmes. And we already talked about this a couple of years ago, but I think it's good to remind you about that. So, a blind student came into our class, we got together with him to see uh, if he had all the tools he needed to have a decent semester. So, when we tried and uh, investigated, we realized that our tools weren't suitable for the regular screen readers at that time. We used Faro, and uh, the problem with uh, most uh, small -time environments is that they are graphical and screen readers use the native windows from the OSS. So the only thing that the screen reader could detect is that Faro was there, but it couldn't detect anything inside of it. So if we open a new window, we try to navigate, nothing happened for, for him. His name is Miguel, by the way. We will tell you uh, about him later. Uh, so he couldn't work with that. And we needed to do something uh, for him to be able at least to, to learn. So what we did a bit of research, and we ended up deciding to use uh, Amber Smalltalk, that is a web Smalltalk environment. It runs on a web browser, so that was uh, the, the navigation for the screen reader was free for us because that was already implemented. So we just had to do a couple of tricks for it. Um, these are the, the, the most important that we did. The problem was modified some uh, HTML tags uh, because when he was navigating through the, the, for example, the packages, the classes, the protocols, um, he expected to hear things in a way that he would tell that that was an important section, but the HTML tags weren't okay there. Uh, I mean, they, they weren't the, the right tags that needed to be there, so we modified that according to what he uh, told us. Uh, lucky for us, he was a, a really good uh, teacher for us. He already knew a bit about programming, the basics. So he told us, okay, I need an H1 here, an H2 here. So that was uh, really good for us. It was easy to understand. Yeah. Did that change the, the number of people who are in their eyes? No, yeah. No, just a little bit. Just a little bit, because uh, when, when you... Amber? Had only divs with style text. So when, when you change the, the tags, you change these divs by uh, headings um, with different hierarchies. Uh, just uh, to let you know that something is 
more important. Uh, yeah, it changed a little bit the view because the text is greater. Uh, but we, we, we didn't. We change only it. saw the text a bit bigger. It wasn't yeah. a change for us at all. I mean, if someone didn't know that, they won't probably notice it. So. Yeah, the other thing we did was making the code area accessible. Uh, the code was using a JavaScript library, just to make it really fast, uh, that didn't have a setting to say, okay, you can read this, so when he was navigating, he couldn't hear anything on that part. So it was just uh, adding uh, something on, on the information that the uh, library had, and they actually took that change and they merged that into their code, so uh, that, Besides, um, yeah, Amber did it, actually, I was going to say the library, but it yeah. was Amber that had, that had that. So Amber now is uh, pretty much accessible. It wasn't only for Miguel, but for everyone who wants to use it. Um, so, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, what? The changes, <laughs> it's not English. You know, you understand. The changes were enough for him to work uh, for the semester. But he didn't, know, he didn't have the exact same experience as the rest of the, the, the people in the class. So uh, that we just had to think about it over and over again. And that's what it like to Lazarus. So, yeah. yeah. um, but when, when we saw that uh, Miguel couldn't work the same way that his classmates, um, yeah, we took this. Um, Rush decision to use Amber, but we wanted uh, that he um, uh, next flying people that wanted to to use this model um, could use a real um, and live uh, object environment. So we decided to uh, make Faro accessible. Um, the first um, approach we took was to integrate. Um, a small top image with actual screen readers because they are separated programs. Um, but when we <coughs> when we dig a little bit more into how they work and uh, implementations and details, um, we said that they're, they're, they weren't fit for our problem. We <coughs> We, we knew that we had to manage the navigation inside the window because we wanted to give, give them um, a logic path uh, inside the windows, uh, give them features that maybe the, the screen reader won't give us. Yeah, so the screen reader wouldn't have a way still to say this is what is on the screen, we would still need to tell them. So we realized that we were we had to do that from scratch, so it, it was the same thing. So, well, we took advantage, advantage of one piece of uh, screen reader, which is uh, the X2Speech synthesizer that Angie mentioned. Um, we use them to uh, transform text that came from, uh, comes from the image and send it to the TTS and transform it to voice, basically. Um, well, when <coughs> when we we when we saw that we could use TTS uh, to publish this stuff, uh, um, we knew that we needed some special things. Like we, we didn't want to block the the image process, so we needed to run uh, every TTS call. Um, a detach or asynchronous. Um, so well, for that, we use commercial and OS process, which are two libraries that um, communicate with the operating system, creating um, external processes and processes with the um, <coughs> We also wanted to support many TDS, and also for different operating systems. Because Faro is portable to different operating systems, and we want uh, all of them to uh, be supported by Lazaro. Well, <coughs> this is uh, like two diagrams of uh, what we uh, model. We have two 
different hierarchies. One of them is um, the DTS uh, bridge hierarchy, which represents um, how we communicate with the uh, DTS on the operating system. And the common provider, which represents uh, how we build the commands that we will send to, <coughs> to the operating system based on the uh, current operating system. Right? For now, we go for Linux and Windows and uh, other tickets. Um, we, we are um, trying to support some networks and Windows does uh, support. You have to win. <laughs> well, this is a um, flow uh, that we uh, need to do when we try to transform um, what, what a view looks like to text and reproduce it uh, with TTS. Um, basically, <clears throat> what we do is to um, subscribe to uh, Announcements. We use announcements a library integrated in part. Of. Um, so <clears throat> when a morph is focused, we um, basically subscribe to this uh, announcement and, and we send a textual representation of this uh, visual element, this uh, morph. Um, to this reader, we build the command using the command provider. And we send it to the um, operating system and we execute it on the console and reproduce this out here. Yeah, so to sum up everything that Matthew just explained, there was the, the three keys that we needed to do to make it work. Uh, so, the. Does this work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the text that comes from the, the announcement that Mati told us, like for example, when a window uh, is opened uh, and is processed in some way, comes and gets into the bridge. The bridge knows uh, the command that it needs to use for the TTS, depending on which one it is using. Uh, it also knows how to ask for which uh, OS we are currently running everything in. So um, the bridge, we, uh, builds the command uh, based on that, based on which DTS, which OS, and sends it to the, to the OS to, to execute that. Then uh, we do that through common shell and OS process. So we open an exclusive process for each DTS command that we need to send that's, external, that's separated from the small type VM. I know that might seem obvious, but at first, uh, we, we had to fight with that a bit. Uh, uh, well, we send the command to the OS, uh, the OS takes on from that, it executes it, calls the TTS, the TTS uh, speaks, and then we know what we're trying to see here. Uh, so well, this is kind of more in an abstract way. Uh, the final implementation allows the environment to communicate with TTSs, sending a, a written model that's created by Lazaro. <coughs> Uh, based on the things, uh, the visual model that it needs to create dependent on uh, what it needs to translate at the moment. Uh, and well, each time we need to read something, an event is triggered, and um, we grab the thing that the trigger, we grab the, the context information we get from that uh, event, and we send it to the, to the bridge to put everything together, send it to the OS, and from now on, it's, like, it's out of small talk and out into the non-virtual world. <laughs> um, this, this graphic is basically to uh, abstract the ideas because in the future we want to uh, for Lazaro to different small talk distributions um, and most of the things in, in uh, the layers um, are different on the different um, Distributions, for example, event management. Mostly of, the views. Mostly the views. <laughs> most, most of all the views. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we will be more about that tomorrow morning. We got done, so let me see. Uh, okay, so, okay, we'll talk about that and then we'll show the demo. Uh, yeah, so for, for 
been a good experience to the users. We wanted to improve a little bit the interactions with Carl. Um, we added some settings on the menu. In that case, uh, we only have one of them to select the current TTS. We could have many TTS. Uh, we support them. Um, so, well, we, we can select it uh, in the menu. Um, the, the funny thing is that it will automatically change the, the TTS on the selected. Uh, changing the system. It's amazing. Um, we also added some uh, shortcuts uh, because yeah, we, we wanted uh, <laughs> yeah, we wanted uh, to uh, interact with Lazarus easily. Uh, so well, the first command is uh, to stop reading text. Uh, you know how annoying that can get. <laughs> Mostly when you're not blind and you're trying to make it work, and you hear like ten messages at the same time. Yeah. Oh, we have. I, I have a I'm sorry about that. Um, I will tell you in a few seconds. Uh, and the other one is to read uh, the text editor when you are um, right now. If you're na navigating a window and you stop on a text editor and you want to read the text that is inside, well, you can do it by using this one. Um, it was useful, useful for me, at least, when I was debugging and using the tool. Um, a funny story about the first command was that when we uh, were implementing uh, Lazarus, it was really annoying because uh, it talks all the time. If you... All the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, we created this command to stop the, the screen reader. And also, the TTS bridge model allows us to create like a null bridge that says nothing. So, that was good for development reasons. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we could have muted the computer, but that was like. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, well, navigation. Um, to be more like friendly when um, navigating to the uh, on the system browser, uh, we decided to build like, a path um, between every component on the on the browser. Um, when an, wow. a window opens, we read the title. Uh, if you navigate forward, uh, it will go to the packages. You can search on the packages, you can um, move between uh, the list of packages. Um, if you navigate forward again, you will go to the classes. Uh, you can interact with the classes, like looking at the class side, the information, um, <clears throat> After that, you go to the protocols, messages, and uh, you mentioned that in the yeah. yeah, when you navigate forward on the on the window. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Because uh, blind people uh, usually don't use mouse. So they, they use the keyboard. Um, and well we, we wanted to to have a nice navigation. So it keeps going the simple still for example the library shop browsing up and down scrolling up and down partnerships. No 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 it's it's uh, on demand. It follows you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on demand. It's if you want to move into the next step in and you're on the packages column, you will move to the classes column. So they need to have a logical order, but yeah, it's on demand. Uh, yeah. It it has like different um, reading steps. When it starts with the title, it just reads the title. But when you go to the packages list, it reads uh, where you are. Sorry, packages. Are you yeah. Going to show yeah, we have a new one. Yeah, it will be. The, the, the back are yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's move on to that. Uh, you will notice that you. Yeah, you will notice that the windows are changed in a bit that might result annoying to the eyes, 
this is a beta version, and mostly blind people won't care about that. So, uh, but we had to change a couple of things so uh, they could have a proper way of navigating through this. There was something well. that on the way for them. Okay, so you just pause a bit. Uh, it's alright. So, but but people won't use the mouse, so they will they they have to use shortcuts and everything. We know that opening the system browser is done with Control plus O plus B. So. Not in a flash system browser. So it, it you just read the title. Yeah. The title. <laughs> so you, you can see that uh, the elements are like here. Uh, this is mostly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, for, for opening those, it has some shortcuts. There were some things that we needed to do ourselves, and there are more things that we need to do, but uh, they're not done yet, mostly for uh, managing and customizing the TTS. Um, but yeah, or I think something that we are still fighting with is moving uh, between windows, because navigating is through one of them, but you can like alt tab in Faro, so. Uh, uh, there, there were a couple of experiments, but nothing that works. Yeah. So, okay, let's suppose I want to go to the Lazar package. So, uh, I go to the next step for navigating, that it's down with Control tab. Package selection. So, it, it read like uh, the, the column, right? So, it, it didn't uh, read the packages. It just, yeah, it just announced it's the, a, a hidden title we have for, for the column. So, for example, I want to look for the Lazar package, so I just type A A L A C. Uh, so it tells me that I'm on the Lazar package. Uh, it's not gone to the classes column yet. If I want to navigate through the columns, it will tell me uh, the different name of the packages. Yeah, it's kind of it doesn't know that Lazar is Lazar. We have to look at that. So anyway. If we want to move into the classes column, we can class selection. Lazaro. TTS announcement manager. For example, if we want to see how the the announcements send the text to the to the TTS, we can move past. Show the class side. All these buttons. Show the class type. Show the class comment. <laughs> Category selection. Uh, just uh, just as a side note, uh, blind people use uh, screen readers like 10 times faster. You probably won't understand what's happening. They're used to working like that. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so we're just showing this, but if we probably show this to Miguel, he will kill us. <laughs> method selection. So we're now on the method selection. Handle code. We move on the handle code. Uh, we move on to the handle method. And if we want to see the, how the method is, uh, the message is implemented, we just go into the and it will read the whole thing. I will probably stop it in a while, so... 1 slash 3, 1. Oh, no, that's... Sorry. That's the, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the one good thing that's a good thing. Take that. Handle colon both announcement to self. Handle both lost focus dot self. Okay. Reverse end tent. I hate you. Reverse <laughs> <laughs> But it's helpful for them. And if you want to read that again, you will just... Control sheet. Here. Handle colon both announcement to self. That's how it goes. So, um, we still need to do things like, for example, if they want to read this, just this line, do it, but it's a bit more complex. Uh, so, for now, it works uh, in, in a beta mode. Um, so, what do you want to um, Yeah, let people uh, usually use um, the keyboard to navigate between uh, text uh, in different ways, like reading uh, character by character, um, reading uh, whole words. Things like that. We didn't implement it yet, but we want to, to do it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, now you're done. The same way that uh, we did. Yeah, so what, what he said is that uh, like um, people yeah. take into account where the cursor is at the moment to write, and they can see, uh, they can ask for what behind that or, or after that, so, yeah, yeah different students, okay, uh, strokes. Um, yeah, we still need to uh, make some improvement, improvements on that, but, um, yeah, there are lots of different comments that they use in navigating overall. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, actually, if, if we, when you get the message, that, if you get a message on that side on Taro, it usually it reads it. If you say the image, it will let you know, it, it announces that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, let's move faster so they don't hate us. Uh, so, okay, if you want to know about that. Um, okay. um, every project <laughs> we have a lot of feature, uh, feature work. Um, the most important is to finish uh, some external functionality that, that we mentioned and launch an MVP so people can start uh, testing it and using it. Um, support macOS and also Windows 64 bits. Um, extend to other small platforms like uh, Squeak or Quiz. Yeah. Uh, Gaston is, uh, is working on that so. Uh, really good uh, progress. Um, and also um, include configuration of the GTS functionalities inside Dazzar because, as uh, Angie mentioned before, um, we can configure GTS to uh, go faster or slower, um, change the policies and things like that. Um, you can also have dictionaries of um, words that can be mapped, that symbols can be mapped to uh, words, uh, things like that. So we also want to, to add some uh, is. Um, and finally, um, have like a, a more abstract um, structure, uh, so we can like, split into pieces and include packages into different uh, Small so we'll distribution and make it easier to um, work out. Um, well, contribute. If you want to contribute, uh, you have to go to Lesser Project slash uh, Lesser. Um, we have uh, an installation guide and also uh, some um, instructions on how to set up the environment and whatever. We are under the MIT license. You can send us an email uh, on this uh, mail. Conclusions? Yeah, so uh, if there's a conclusion, I will really fast. Uh, thinking about this for such a long time made us think about a lot of the programming, the, programming, uh, the impact it can have in terms of inclusion. Uh, like how many times we think about the final user having a disability when we program, or when we're building the tools that other people are going to use to program. Uh, also about the concept of universal design that is kind of related, is the idea of having uh, every single thing that you build, make it being ready as it, as it is when it first comes out to be used by anyone that has any kind of disability. Uh, that is the concept of design. On itself, I didn't do it before starting to work on this. And also, this is kind of our fault, small talkers, uh, because of the evolution of Louis and how it made uh, it made blind people uh, step away from the, the, the evolution that the rest of the people were having. And nowadays, most blind people choose to use a text editor to program. They can't use it is uh, IDEs uh, is uh, in the same way we can do. They can use tools like a debugger in the same way as we do, and that is kind of sad. We want people to we want to encourage people to think about that the next time they, they are trying to build some new tools and uh, help us uh, make the GUI and blind people friends in, in the way they can. So yeah. So our conclusion uh, we we did for. The whole final project that we had is that we shouldn't have extra languages or extra tools. We should have the same tools being used for everyone. Uh, and we need to think about that. We need to have that in mind. And it's not that hard to have it. I think it's way more easy to build something from scratch, thinking like that, than trying to adapt it later on the, on the go. So, yeah. Uh, we want to thank very much the University of Guinness. Uh, that and home and gave us all the time we needed to do this, especially Maximo Pieto and Noel Garbeza that were uh, that were dealing with our crisis this month. The pines that is our 
our second ticket house that uh, also gave us lots of time and lots of people to discuss about it. Hernan is going to judge our final project in a couple of weeks. So, um, most of all, so this is Miguel. This is the guy that uh, we were supposed to teach, uh, but he ended up teaching us lots of things. So we are with a lot. So uh, that's it. Any questions? universities when people are learning happens a lot. All, everything is built in English and sometimes we end up uh, programming in Spanish for, for the English natives and all of that. Um, I know there are most mature uh, screen readers or TTS that can adapt to that. Uh, for now we only try with English TTSs but for example I know that uh, Gaston is working with a Mac uh, TTS that has a voice in Argentinian Spanish, so that's something pretty cool. I don't know how it adapts to English, but I know there are more mature, mature tools that we can put our hands on here. Yeah, in, in that cases, I think it, it's always useful to um, change the configurations, like change the voice uh, when you read uh, Spanish, change the voice when you read English. Uh, yeah, but I don't know how that is done dynamically. If it identifies the word is in English or in Spanish, how. Yeah. So you started out with Amber, where you had the document model behind it, and you just came here to do it. And then you went over and you implemented it in extension to Barrow. How did that compare in the end? What, what, what were the plus and minuses of either of those approaches? I think they, they are really different because the genealogy is basically what supported. The only thing you need to do is to put the right text on that's it. Uh, this can read really support within the demo. But from a blind person's perspective, was it experience? Oh, how was it? Not what you had to do, what the end effect was. Um, yeah, I, we, we approach it to be more the most similar we can. Um, yeah. So your target was actually to make Pharaoh behave like him. With this, with this, yeah, yeah. No, not to be accessible, not to be like number. Yeah, for example, I, we have Martin here. He was uh, his teammate on the OB class uh, of the final project they did, and there were a couple of things that uh, Miguel couldn't do. So Martin ended up working with Amber, and they they do, did a couple of hacks in, a, in order to work together. So what happened is that, for example, he couldn't uh, if we had an example in class and we exported it. He couldn't export it to Amber in such an easy way. So if you talk about, if you're telling me like, uh, if I should recommend people to use Amber, yeah, definitely. But we wanted to do this because we wanted, if we were, if we were going to use a tool in our class, we wanted every, everyone to be able to use it. But yeah, I think in terms of uh, for, for blind and blind person, uh, I think Amber was pretty much, uh, yeah, it, it, it was good enough. Uh, if you if you try to make two people work with Barrow and, and Amber, there were some uh, frictions there. But uh, Amber would work okay. Yeah, the, the problem we had was that the experience wasn't the same. If we had some really best lessons, uh, he could uh, import it into, into Amber, for example. Uh, yeah, we, we, we approached different problems. Um, I think if we uh, build that row correctly and uh, we add more features to it, these problems will disappear. Uh, this is our main goal. As a developer, it was hard. Uh, there, there were like we had many problems, and each time we did deeper, we find more problems. Mostly with the with the UI, we had a hard time trying to find like, the most polymorphic way of making them all, uh, for example, react to the uh, 
uh, like say the, the, the title of the window or, or navigate to a list, uh, the mark here is kind of complicated. Uh, okay. <coughs> so, yeah, so yeah, we, we have a bunch of frozen trying to, to support all of these visual elements on Spark. Uh, yeah, it was very hard. And we, we don't support all of them because they are about 800 or, or more. For example, the quiz is much simpler, so it was really uh, easy to, to know all of them. Uh, that's why we said one of the things we want to do is find a way to abstract uh, the way we communicate with the UI and make it more easy to port to the other uh, distributions. Uh, because we, I think the thing we spent most time on was, in, was to get at least for the system browser get all things to be readable. It, it took us a long time. Uh, it was really hard to dig into it. We didn't provide like official documentation like, that was dated completely and everything. So we had to use Halos a lot and transcripts and it was interesting. Transcripts everywhere. Yeah. Thank you.